James says this, 5.16, he says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. But let me read it to you in the Amplified. It says, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. It is dynamic in its working. I just feel like there's been some people that you've grown weary in prayer. Don't shout me down. Do we really believe what we believe we believe? And if you don't know what to pray, pray in tongues. Go get Bishop Hammond's book, 70 Reasons for Speaking in Tongues. And start praying in the Spirit. Because praying in the Spirit supersedes everything that we think. And every plan that we might have. Listen to what George Patton said in World War II when they were facing that just the horrific Nazi army um, over in Germany. He said this. He said, those who pray do more for this world than those who fight. And when the battles go from bad to worse, and when the world goes from bad to worse, it is because there are more battles than there are prayers. How many of us fight first and pray later? Oh, and none of that worked, so I guess I'll pray. How about let's pray first? <laughs> let's pray first. Let's understand prayer is a weapon. Our prayers are a weapon. But also our praise is a weapon. When we come to church together, did you hear the songs that were being sung? I'm dancing on the grave that once held me bound or that the chains that once held me bound. I'm dancing on the grave, laying on the ground. Come on. You know, these, these are decrees. These are declarations into the spirit realm. I'm going to see the victory. You, um, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Come on, guys. We got to understand we're not just singing sweet little songs. We are singing songs that are impacting in the spirit realm and they should be changing us. They are certainly changing an atmosphere, but we've got to recognize that is his weapon. Our praise is a weapon. Psalms 8.2 says, for this purpose, I ordain praise. King James says strength, but NIV translates it praise. For this purpose, I ordain praise. I could think of a lot of reasons why God would say he ordained praise. But listen to what he says. Because of your foe. No, because of your enemy. To silence the foe and to still the avenger. For this purpose. See, we have to remember <laughs> that God... This might shock some of you. God does not need your praise. He's got angels 24-7 crying, holy, holy, holy. No, no, no. God ordained praise because he knew we were going to need to praise him. He knew that praise was a way that was going to align our hearts with heaven and open the heavens so that heaven can come down and we can hear the voice of God. Come on, it shatters the enemy. Isaiah 30, 31 says, the voice of the Lord shatters the enemy. With his scepter, he will strike them down. Every stroke the Lord lays on the back of the enemy with his punishing rod will be to the music of tambourines and harps as he fights them in battle with the blows of his arm. Let me say this. Apostle Tom had Julie come up here and dance this morning. You know, this is the, the year anniversary of her losing her, most of her family, her and Yvette losing most of her family. He said, boy, I, 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 hate, I hate putting her on the spot, but I know it's what's going to make her break through. And you're breaking through, Julie. Come on, praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Every stroke the Lord lays on the back of the enemy with his punishing rod will be to the music. Come on, when you're singing, it's like torment to the devil. No matter how your voice sounds. <laughs> Make a joyful noise. That's right. Listen, we were, we were on a, uh, a youth trip back in the late 90s. Pastor Dan used to get us into these crazy youth trips that he would have us come with him on. And we went to this place um, up in Detroit, Michigan, up in Pontiac, Michigan, an event called Day One. 
and we had two busloads of kids. So there was like 100 kids, and somehow Pastor Dan talked us into actually getting on those buses and riding up with the kids. Two full days, two like 10-hour days on buses to go up to this event. And um, I don't know what happened to our brains. I don't know why we didn't just fly, but we were on these buses for two full days with these kids. And so at one of the truck stops, we stopped, and it was our job. The kids went in and got themselves some food and some snacks and everything. And then it kind of came time where we needed to gather them all up and put them back on the bus and, and get on our way. So we kind of all split up as the adults, and I went into the video arcade that they had at this truck stop. And when I went in there, I ran some of the kids out, got them off the pinball machines, and back in the day when they played pinball machines not on their phones, um, and put them, sent them back to the bus, and I looked at one of the games that they were playing, and the name of the game in big, bold, red letters was the word Revolution. You know what the word revolution means? It means a radical and pervasive change in society and the social structure. How many know that the enemy's been driving a revolution? But listen, it said revolution, and then right underneath that, it said these words. The music is the weapon. Let me just say, the enemy knows that music is a weapon. As a matter of fact, back in the 1960s, we saw an entire cultural revolution happen throughout the earth, and it was driven by music. As a matter of fact, the Beatles even wrote a song called Revolution. You say you want a revolution, you want to change the world. They knew exactly what they were doing, and it was driven by music. That's why I believe that there's a sound that's coming out of the church today. The songs that are being written, the sound that's being released is a, is a counter-revolution that turns things back. Our praise is a weapon. So we've got to learn how to lift through prayer, lift through praise. Then we've got to learn how to shift through prophecy and proclamations and decrees. This is all stuff that we teach in this house. You should know this, but I want you to have the visual to understand that it's not good enough just to lift. We've got to shift, and we've got to allow God to, 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 to push with us. Sometimes we come into praise and worship. It's like, you know, well, down the street we can go, and, you know, they get out in like an hour because they only spend 20 minutes on praise and worship. Well, you're welcome to go there. That's not what we're going to do. We believe for the presence of God to come down. We believe for the voice of the Lord to come forth. We believe that God has an agenda, and we're going to try to hear what it is that he wants to accomplish during our time of praise and worship. We're not going to rush in and rush out of the presence of God and hope that somebody gets a little, a little sprinkle. 